In this video, I'm gonna break down the big differences between buying options and selling options as trading approaches. Specifically, I'll outline the probability of making money, the risk and reward potential, how each approach makes and loses money, and much more, so be sure to stay tuned. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications if you're interested in getting all of our options trading videos in the future. When it comes to every single trade, there is a buyer and there is a seller. So when it comes to trading options, what are the primary differences between buying options and selling options as trading approaches? It's important to understand the key differences between buying options and selling options as trading approaches so you can first figure out which camp you align with more and so you can understand the difficulties associated with each approach. Let's start by analyzing the risk and reward potential when comparing buying options and selling options. Perhaps the biggest attraction of options trading is the concept of leverage, which is being able to make a lot of money from just a little bit of money, and the ability to control your risk and reward potential for every trade that you put on. When it comes to buying options or option buying strategies, the reward potential is typically far greater than the risk taken for that particular trade, which is one reason a lot of traders prefer buying options over selling options. Let me show you what I mean by that by looking at some real option prices that I recently observed in the market. On April 18th, 2019, Netflix was trading for $358.19. Now the particular expiration date that I looked at is May 17th, 2019, which at the time had 29 days to expiration. The strategy that I looked at was purchasing the 355 call option on Netflix that expired in 29 days, and that 29 day 355 call option was trading for a price of $14.05, which actually translates to a valuation of $1,405, since every option is quoted on a per share basis and regular stock options correspond to 100 shares of stock. If a trader was extremely bullish on Netflix, meaning they anticipated Netflix share price would increase significantly in the near future, buying the 29 day call option with a strike price of $355 for $14.05 could be an attractive trade because one of the benefits of buying options is that the risk is completely limited to what you pay for that option. So in the case of buying the 355 call option for $14.05, the worst case scenario is that the option expires worthless and the trader loses $1,405 for every call option that they purchased. So in this example, in terms of risk and reward, the maximum loss potential or the risk is $1,405, while the maximum reward potential or the maximum profit potential is theoretically unlimited because since there's no limit to how much Netflix can increase to, there's no limit to how much that 355 call option can be worth in the future, which means in theory, that trade has unlimited profit potential. So if unexpected news came out and the Netflix stock price increased to $400, that 355 call option would be worth at least $45 since a call option option that has a strike price below the stock price will always be worth at least its intrinsic value and for call options the intrinsic value is equal to the current share price minus the strike price and if Netflix is at $400 and the strike price of the call option is $355 we know that 355 call option will be worth at least $45 with a purchase price of $14.05 an increase in that option's value to $45 would represent a 220% return on the investment that that trader made, which is a very sizable return for a trade that lasted less than 29 days. So what's the catch? Well, when buying options, you need something favorable to happen and fast for you to make money on that trade. In the case of buying a call option, that means you need the stock price to increase and or you need implied volatility to increase before the option expires for you to make money on that trade. If either of those things do not happen, you will lose money on that option purchase because as time passes, the extrinsic value will come out of those options and at expiration, an option will only be worth its intrinsic value. In the case of the three 355 Netflix call option, if Netflix is at $358.19, that 355 call option has $3.19 of intrinsic value because the share price of $358.19 is $3.19 above the call's strike price, which means the remaining value, or $10.86 of that option's value, is completely extrinsic. Now, as time passes and the option's expiration date approaches, the option will slowly lose all of its extrinsic value, leaving only the intrinsic value at expiration. So if I buy this Netflix call option for $14.05, 
and in 29 days, Netflix is still at the same price of $358.19. That $355 call option will only be worth $3.19, which means I will lose $10.86 on that option, which means I actually lose $1,086 on that option purchase for every contract that I bought. For the $355 call option purchase for $14.05 to break even at expiration, meaning the options value is the same at expiration compared to what I purchased it for, Netflix has to increase to $369.05, which comes from the fact that if I buy the 355 call option for $14.05, for that 355 call option to have $14.05 of value at expiration, Netflix needs to be $14.05 above the call's strike price when that call option expires and 355 plus the purchase price of $14.05 gives us a break-even price of $369.05. In short, if I buy the 355 call option for $14.05 and Netflix is currently at $358.19, I need Netflix to increase over $10 for my position to just break even at expiration, which means I don't make or lose any money. If Netflix does not increase by that amount, my my call option will be less valuable at expiration compared to what I paid for it, in which case I will have a loss at expiration. So when buying options, you need a favorable stock price movement in a short period of time to make money on that trade. Otherwise, you're gonna lose money to the passage of time because as time passes, extrinsic value comes out of options and when you're buying options, the decrease in the extrinsic value will work against you as an option buyer. When it comes to selling options, everything that I just mentioned is reversed. Using Netflix again as our example, let's look at an option selling strategy so that we can compare the differences between buying options and selling options. For the option selling strategy, let's look at selling the Netflix put option with a strike price of $350 that has 29 days to expiration. In this example, Netflix is at $358.21 at the time of recording this option's price. The 350 put option was trading for $7.90 or $790 in premium. When selling options, the most you can make on an option trade is the difference between the price that you sell the option for and $0 because the best case scenario as an option seller is that the option is worthless at expiration. In the case of this 350 put option that is currently trading for $7.90, if at expiration the put options value is $0, as the option seller, I will profit by $790 since if I sell an option for $7.90 and it expires worthless, my profit on that trade is gonna be $7.90 on the option, which as we know, due to the contract multiplier of 100, the actual profit would be $790 for every put option that I sold. When buying options, you adopt a buy low, sell high mentality, which means that your goal when buying an option is to later sell it for a price that is more than what you paid for that option. When selling options, you adopt a sell high, buy low mentality, which means as an option seller, your goal is to buy back the option for a price that is less than what you collected when selling that option. And in the ideal scenario, the option price is $0 at expiration, which means that option is worthless and you keep 100% of what you sold the option for. So we know that if I sell this 350 put option on Netflix for $7.90, the most I can make is $790 per put contract that I sell. But how much can I lose in this same trade? When selling a put option, the worst case scenario that can happen is the stock price goes to $0, in which case that put option will be worth the strike price. So in the case of this put option with a strike price of $350, if Netflix went to $0, the 350 put would be worth $350, which would mean the option is worth $35,000. Now, since I sold it for $790, if its price increased to $35,000, I would have a loss of $34,210. And that's on one contract. But as we know, it's very unlikely that a stock is going to go out of business and go to zero dollars in such a short time period, such as 29 days. But the key here is that when you sell options, the risk that is taken is typically far more significant than the amount of reward potential that you have. So in the case of buying the Netflix call option, the maximum loss potential was $1,405, while the profit potential is theoretically unlimited. But in the case of selling this 350 put option on Netflix, the maximum profit potential 
potential is $790 and the maximum loss potential is $34,210. So very different in terms of risk and reward. Which brings us to the first major difference between buying options and selling options, and that's that when you buy options, typically the amount of money that you can make far exceeds what you can lose on that trade, and when you're selling options, typically the amount you can lose far exceeds what you can make on that trade. The second major difference is that, as I mentioned, when buying the call option, Netflix has to increase, otherwise the trade will lose money to the loss of extrinsic value as the option approaches its expiration date. In the case of selling the 350 put option on Netflix, Netflix does not have to go anywhere for the position to make money, which means that as an option seller, I don't need anything to happen to make money, and as an option buyer, I need something very favorable to happen in a short period of time to make money. Let's go over these points once more using the Netflix trades that we just looked at in the previous examples. With Netflix at $358.21, when selling the 350 put option for $7.90, 100% of that 350 put's value is extrinsic because put options only have intrinsic value when the stock price is below the put strike price. And if Netflix is at $358.21, the 350 put option has no intrinsic value, which means the $7.90 cost of that option is 100% extrinsic. Now that means that if time passes and Netflix does not decrease significantly, that 350 put options value will steadily go from $7.90 towards $0. And if Netflix is above $350 at expiration, that 350 put option will expire worthless. And me as the option seller will keep 100% of the premium that I collected for selling that option. Even if Netflix does decrease, Netflix could fall to a price of $342.10. And I would still break even or make money on that 350 put that I sold. And the reason for that is if Netflix is at 342.10 at expiration, the 350 put option will have $7.90 of intrinsic value. And since that's the same amount that I sold the option for, if at expiration the option is worth $7.90, I will have no profit or loss on that position, which means I will break even. So in short, if Netflix is at 358.21 and I sell the 350 put option for $7.90, Netflix could fall all the way to $342.10 and I still wouldn't lose money on that trade at expiration. When buying options, since the risk taken is typically much less than the reward potential, and because you need something to happen in a short period of time to make money, buying options is a low probability trading strategy. And that means in theory, if you buy an option, you have less than a 50% probability of making money on that trade. When selling options, since the risk that you have is typically far greater than the amount of profit you can make, and due to the fact that you don't need anything to happen to make money on that trade, selling options is a high probability trading approach, which means in theory, if you sell an option, the probability that you'll make money on that trade is greater than 50%. It's important to understand that everything related to options trading ties into probability. The more reward potential relative to the risk taken, the lower the probability of making money on that trade. And basic option strategies such as buying call options, buying put options, or combining the two into other option buying strategies, all of these strategies require a significant stock price movement in the favor of that strategy to make money. Otherwise, the position will lose money to time decay. On the other hand, the more risk that is taken relative to the profit potential potential, the higher the probability of making money on that trade, and basic option strategies such as selling call options, selling put options, or combining the two to create other option strategies, all of those strategies are high probability trading approaches because they can profit as long as time passes without a significant movement in the stock price against those positions. The next major difference between buying options and selling options is related to exercise and assignment. Now when you buy an option, you have full control over when you exercise the option, or if if you exercise the option, which means you never have to worry about being assigned on that option. As an option seller, you have no control over when an option buyer will exercise that option. And since you have no control over when that option is exercised, as an option seller, you will sometimes find yourself in a scenario where you get assigned shares of stock unexpectedly because somebody on the other side of that trade exercised the option and unfortunately, you were chosen at random to be assigned the opposing share position as the person that exercised the option. The next difference 
difference between buying options and selling options is that when you buy options, the margin required to put that trade on is going to be equal to the maximum loss potential of that position. So in the case of buying the Netflix call option from earlier, if the maximum loss potential is $1,405, my margin requirement for that trade would be $1,405. Now when selling options, the margin required to put that trade on is typically going to be far more significant than buying an option because when you sell an option, the brokerage firm has to account for potentially large changes against your position, in which case you could lose immense sums of money, which is why when selling options, the margin requirement for putting on a particular trade can be quite steep. So we've talked about the major differences between buying options and selling options, but which approach is better if there is one? Well, to be honest, there really isn't one better approach as there are consistently profitable traders on the buying option side of things and there are consistently profitable traders on the selling option side of things. More important than buying options or selling options is that you have a detailed strategy and a plan that you're following to keep your emotions in check and to keep things consistent with that particular trading approach. But I will mention some difficulties associated with each trading approach. First, when buying options, since there's no limit to how much you can make, it can be very difficult to decide when to sell your option and take the profits since there's no limit to how much the profit can grow to if you buy an option for five dollars and you watch that option price go to ten dollars because the stock price moved in your favor you're probably going to be inclined to continue holding that position because you're anticipating that the stock price continues moving in your favor in which case you could make a lot more money than you've already made right now when it comes to selling options the more profitable the trade becomes, the more logical and easy it is to take profits on that trade because as the trade gets more and more profitable, you have less to make on the position, but you still have all of the risk remaining. For example, if I sell an option for $5 or $500 in premium and the option price falls to $1, I will have a gain of $400 on that position. And with the option price at $1, the most it can lose is another dollar or $100 in my favor, which means I've already made 80% of the profit potential, in which case it would be wise of me to close that position and take the 80% profits because I can only make another $100, but I still have all of the risk on the table if things turn around and the stock price moves again against my position. Now, when it comes to holding losing positions, when you're buying options, it becomes easier and easier to hold a losing position because since you can only lose so much, the closer that option price gets to $0, the less you have to lose, but you still have time left before the option expires, which means that since you have little left to lose, but everything left to gain, it's very easy to hold that option in the anticipation of a reversal in the stock price, which could potentially turn things around for you and leave you with a profitable option purchase. When you're selling options, if a position starts to move against you and you're down money on that trade, it can be very tempting to close the position to cut your losses because since the loss potential is significant and you don't know how much the stock is going to continue moving against you, it can become very difficult to decide when to close the position or when to keep holding it when you're selling options and have a losing trade. When comparing the two trading approaches, buying options and selling options do have their differences and it's important to consider all of the difficulties associated with trading success successfully from either one of those sides. To quickly wrap up this video, let's go ahead and recap all of the major differences between buying options and selling options that I've discussed in this video. First, option buying strategies typically have far more reward potential compared to the risk that is taken. And when selling options, the risk that is taken is typically far more than the reward potential for that particular strategy. In order to profit when you're implementing option buying strategies, you need a favorable movement in the stock price and or implied volatility in a short period of time to make money on that trade. When selling options, you can make money simply when time passes, so long as the stock price does not move significantly against your position. Because of the fact that when you're buying options, you need something favorable to happen in a short period of time, buying options is a low probability trading approach, which means in theory, if you buy an option, the probability that you'll make money on that trade at expiration is less than 50%. When selling options, since you don't need anything to happen to make money, selling options is a high probability trading approach, which means when you sell options, in theory, you have a greater than 50% probability of making money on that trade. Lastly, those who buy options have full control over whether or not they exercise those options, which means as an option buyer, you never have to worry about unexpectedly being assigned a stock position. Whereas when selling options, since you have no control over when or if someone exercises that option, you might sometimes be assigned shares of stock unexpectedly, in which case you'll have the opposite position as the person who exercised the option. 
That's gonna do it for this video on buying options and selling options. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about the two trading approaches. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below because I do respond to almost every single comment that is left on my videos. Once again, I'm Chris from Project Option and I will see you in the next video.